So the next thing going on, we're going to talk about the Go Battle League Season 4. We're going to briefly go into nothing too crazy. So basically, Season 4 okay. starts on September 14th. So when this video goes up live or either or. When this video goes live, we may have it up a day or two before that, depending on how things go. But I got a full weekend plan, so we'll see exactly cool. what happens. Work, life, and how off balance I get. <laughs> 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 but basically, if you do go Battle League, make sure you get in there. Get as high of a rank as you can, because the new season starts on the 14th at 1 p.m. PST time. Or, no, it's, yeah, PST time. So it's yeah. minus 7 GMT time. This change-up will, once the league switches over to Season 4, you'll be rewarded for all your progress and efforts by various tiers. Hit as high of a rank as you can. Level rank 7. If you hit rank 10 by the end of the season, then you'll get the special pose. But you should get that any time that you hit rank 10. Oh. It was the TM that changes, isn't it? Okay. So if you hit rank 7 or higher, you get a Elite Charge TM. Okay. After that, every, every rank gets a higher amount of Stardust because for you to hit that high of a rank, then you had to definitely put in that extra work and that extra Stardust. Yes. So yeah, first up those as good... always. What was that? I said those are the elite charge TMs are good, especially. Wait, how do those work? They're the ones that you can select a a Pokemon. You, it lets you pick and, which move, and lets right? You pick the move. In addition to, it doesn't have any restrictions. So it could be any move that that Pokemon was ever allowed to learn. Okay. okay. So that would allow you to do, I believe, events. I think like Community Day moves. Yeah. Yeah, the Community Day Got moves, it. any legacy moves. The only thing it won't let you do is... I believe you cannot TM Frustration... And the oh okay yeah frustration and return those ones are only TMable by normal TMs slash during the specific time slots that Niantic right. allows for. You can only have those if they're purified or shadow, right? Yeah. So what's the name? Yeah, Frustration and Return are... Those ones are for the Shadow and Purified Pokemon exclusive, and they can only come off during the specific time slots that Niantic designates. The Elite TMs, those ones are basically free game for anything and everything outside of right. the okay. Rocket restrictions. I was thinking it did something different, but... I mean, at this point, too, if you're if you're doing if you're grabbing the elite TMs to try to get a community move for a Pokemon, uh, it's September. Just wait till December. Like, oh we'll yeah, probably be able to do it if you don't need to. That's the thing. Immediately, too. for whatever reason. Well, with GBL and possible silver. I guess that's true. If you're doing it for the on. for the great leagues, for, for for the league. Yeah, and elite TMs and. Those items are very restricted because they can be so powerful and game-changing. So they only release them with the change of the seasons and community days and stuff. The other things going on, we'll discuss it as the weeks go on. Okay. Augmented Sinks will be back on schedule. I missed last week, because, well, this week, because things were just a little too crazy. I and totally they're... Understand. There wasn't anything going on. There was Hound Hour, <laughs> Hound Hour Spotlight Hour. 
It's been quiet. Uh, yeah, I was like, woo. Yeah. <laughs> and he but, ran raid hour. So that was... <laughs> yeah, I was actually out and about for that. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's raid hour. And I looked at it, I was, oh, he trim. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going <I>, home. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get them to make it mega raid hour, but... I was hoping they would. That's what I thought it was going to be. We don't have that much of a push for things, so... No. Yeah. So while we're on the topic of PvP, I wanted to get into some speculation and some some augmental thoughts, I guess, on As how we to do. make PvP for Pokemon into an eSport. Because a lot of factors towards eSports come into play. Have you ever watched a eSports competition, DJ Brad? I've j- briefly nothing nothing serious. Um, I did watch a little bit of the 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 Pokemon Go Invitational, whatever, uh-huh. when they first initially did it. With like, uh, I guess Trainer Tips was announcing yeah. King One, I think. I'm pretty sure. King Ivy, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is whatever. <laughs> it's not probably not the best game to try to like dive into it, but. Yeah, well, I mean, not just Pokemon. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I haven't really watched any esports. I, uh, I'll, you know, if it's on, I'm like, oh, cool, what are they playing? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then I go, this is too, this is too much, too fast. And then that's <laughs> the end of that. What about sports in general? How about? Uh, no, that's a different story. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I, I played soccer all the way up through into college. Okay. Um, so when you, what about a sport that you don't play or a sport that you may watch that you want to be involved with? What are the things you may look for or interact with? <laughs> oh, I just got done watching the Janelle's Marble Race or Marble Olympics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm not telling. If it's interesting, I'll watch it. I just, you know, I don't have cable, so yeah, setting down to a schedule to watch, be like, oh, and keep up with the, that kind of stuff, never doesn't appeal to me. Like, well, yeah, a lot of I the... want to watch Newcastle United. That's my that's my premier team if they're when they're actually in the Premier League. Okay, um, but again, I just don't I don't keep up with it. Yeah, I'm not, well, and that's I'm not against it. I'm not opposed to sports or esports sports in well. general, but I just don't. <laughs> I just don't dive in. <laughs> That's the thing. There has to be a a bit of a niche for other people to sink into, and yeah. that's why some people they're trying to push for Pokemon to be an esport, or yeah. they're just looking to. They're not looking to reinvent the wheel. They're just looking for ways for. Okay, my favorite game should be an esport. I should be able to play that competitively and get rewarded for that. Yeah. And there's other factors when it comes down to becoming an eSport, as they would call it. Because when it comes to eSports in general, you can look at the most popular ones. League of Legends, Dota, those ones have a team factor to it, which may be the reason why Pokemon now has a game in the works. The Pokemon Unite, I believe is... think so. And that is a team-based game. Yeah, that's a moda, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be a... I think it's Unite. We'll correct it otherwise, but... Um... But when it comes to a... Yes. When it comes to a team, when it comes to a boy band, when it comes to anything that is popular, to have multiple players on a same team allows for other viewers to then gravitate or anchor on to a certain niche of that team Mm -hmm. or a certain player or play style. Because when it comes to esports in general, yeah, you can watch for Pokemon itself, but if that player is not playing in your play style or the way that you enjoy and play the game, then it's not going to be interesting to you a lot of competitive PvP players for Pokemon Go or for uh, the Pokemon competitive scene, 
will actually play towards the meta, which some people don't enjoy that. And some will use a niche strategy that requires a lot of farming for IVs or a certain combination or a higher chance of failure, a burden of execution. So it's basically a strategy that is very tough or difficult to play because it requires precision planning it or, or certain ways for it. So it's like them having a two glass cannons and one tank Pokemon on their team, basically so that the glass cannon does their damage and then they immediately swap out for the other Pokemon to soak the attacks. There were even strategies early on that had a level one Pidgey on the team. And the challenge was get the level one Pidgey in there to soak up a charge attack and see if you can win. And there were okay. people that succeeded because in some situations, that swap or that tank Pokemon can be basically be a n- another shield for the players to play with. Right, I gotcha. And in means of the shield mechanics in general, negating one charged attack could mean winning or losing. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so that's why the, the Pokemon Unite has such a... I was going to say Azumarill is such a tank. Azumarill. Oh, yeah. That it can soak a, a charge move, no problem. Almost any of them. Yeah, it's that health pool and that the typing combination that uh-huh. just does work. And its move set has a lot of playability because it can counter, it can take something that's super effective and still be hanging in there and not need a shield every time. Meanwhile, it can take out the counter before it can counter it. depending on how they play with shields or how they play with swaps. So there is a competitive aspect towards PvP in general. And it is decently fast-paced, but it can lose some people towards watching in general. Okay. But the Pokemon Unite, that plays a... An, it fills a nice niche that they can get into that the other games like League of Legends or Dota or Heroes of the Storm, any of that, have been able to capitalize on. Because they have that team aspect. They have the full (coughs) customization. So if you wanted, you could have your entire, all of your teammates wearing a a similar skin or similar color combination. So... You then have other players watching, and they're like, "Oh, I like the red team. Let's go for that." Yeah, yeah. You can give uniformity, and yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um. So some ideas I had for for Pokemon Go to become a esport in its current state. There should be a change up in most battle mechanics for Pokemon in. Pokemon Go or in the Pokemon main series. And that would be the thing that they've had in the anime series where they've had combos, they've had the ability to dodge, they've had little niche, unique outfits for trainers, for the Pokemon, for different situations, environmental factors. So as we know, there's no way that... Pikachu would actually defeat an Onyx in battle, but because... No. (laughs) (laughs) Half the things that he defeats in the anime, there's no way. Exactly. But that's part of the the fun factor and the the hidden gameplay that could be a factor in Pokemon PvP. We were even thinking that attacks could go to a certain extremity of that Pokemon as opposed to just being a base attack. Okay. You're doing flamethrower just straight on right at them. It would mean that if you were able to target a certain extremity, 
and the shield would actually be on the mid extremity or the top extremity and you were to shoot at the feet at the time, then it would allow for a reduction of damage because either way they shielded, but you still get a bit of damage because the shield wasn't in the right spot. Do you get what I mean? Hmm, okay. Yeah. Because there's often times you're watching maybe Pokemon Competitive, the VGC, as they could call it, and those mm-hmm. shields, they have Protect, they have Detect, other things as well. And they're invulnerable for the whole thing, and it negates the entire thing. And, okay, there could have been a little more gameplay. There could have been more fast-paced action going on. But, no, it just negates it, and then, okay, we just lost 30 to 40 seconds worth of gameplay because right. they had that as part of their strategy. Right. Meanwhile, it could have been shortened if they had actually decided to play with a smaller Pokemon, that the smaller Pokemon, one shield, would actually negate the entire damage because that smaller Pokemon would hide behind a a shield of the same size, but it no longer has a top or a middle extremity. It only has the top. Right, it's just, it's fully protected. Yeah. So it adds that extra size factor because no person in their right mind would ever show up to fight a bear with a worm because obviously that's not going to work out. Meanwhile... (laughs) (laughs) Worm use dig. It's gone. It's gone. We're not getting it back. (laughs) (laughs) But that's the other factors where... Okay, size should be the factor where that bear is going to be too slow or that large Pokemon is going to be is going to take more hits, but it also has more health and more attack because of that. Meanwhile, the smaller Pokemon has less spots to hit from, but it has the advantage it has the advantage of having less spots to hit from, so it has more opportunities to get an attacks. So it could even be things where certain sized Pokemon or certain Pokemon with certain with certain abilities could have precise aim, which then opens up a new spot. So like the way that they have their their quick attack moves, where it will okay. always hit. It'll basically always hit, regardless. Right. And then they put a ability-based thing for a certain Pokemon that will always hit the attacks if it comes from the right side. Because that know, it knows the precise point where you can actually hit. And it becomes kind of like how they have, I think, God of War, where okay. you basically jump onto a giant boss and then you have to beat the right arm off before you can actually defeat them because right. the arm is the one that's holding the shield or other factors like that. So basically in order to make Pokemon go or Pokemon in general in eSport, you need teams or leagues based off of regions. That way players can then gravitate towards, okay, team mystic is going up against team valor. I got to see my team win. That's how we do it. Right. I know Overwatch, they do the thing where each state has actually their own esports league. So, like, Philadelphia has their own team. Um, when I was watching Heroes of the Storm, every country, there were teams all over, but it would always come down to a U.S. team or South Korean team. Chinese team, U.S. team, a whole bunch of stuff, European team. Right. And so even after their team lost, they're still watching the tournament because it's broken down by people having a national pride with things. Like regionally, of some, of some sense. Yeah. Yeah. Making 
a video game into an esport requires a lot of factors. That way, there's more watchability for players, for viewers, for sometimes for advertisers to gravitate and try and capitalize on a certain demographic that may be watching. Yeah, those are our thoughts on there. <laughs> okay. Do you have any other ideas for it? I definitely like the uh, making it like a regionally regional teams. Um, mm -hmm. I wish I wish as a short term fix <laughs> that we could use our Pokemon from, from Pokemon Go in Pokemon Stadium. I think that would expand the yeah, PvP. Well, did, didn't they? But yes. <laughs> didn't they do a, a new one? Or are they doing a new one? Um, Hold on. At the moment, I believe. Maybe I'm thinking of Stadium they 2. They haven't done it just yet, but I know that Pokemon Home, you'll be able to transfer Pokemon into it, and then they may be doing battles and competitions through there. But yeah, the it would be a cool feature. Oh, yeah, it's for sixty four. What am I thinking of? Um, there's a few things. There was Pokemon Coliseum, but I think that was a video game as well. Um, I think that's what I'm thinking there's of. There's Pokemon Battle Revolution. That was from that's the GameCube, TV, I believe. Was it GameCube? No. No, it was Coliseum. It was GameCube. Coliseum, yeah. I'm looking them up as I go. But, I mean, because you can always you can transfer your Pokemon into your into the Switch games uh, because through uh, what is it? Eevee and Pikachu? Yeah, the Let's what Go games. Let's Go. The Let's Go games. Mm -hmm. But then it's the only your Pokemon from Pokemon Go in essence because okay. their stats change depending on because they have more they have like the expanded stats versus just the three yeah exactly i just i would be i would want to be able to like move it to another console or you know something to change so you could actually battle in your in the in the turn-based battles with your pokemon from go and they would stay in go right you wouldn't have to just get rid of them you know yeah. Well, yeah, I can definitely see if Niantic were to do like a, if there were a stadium type game, you could possibly link your account to it. And instead of fighting yeah. with them directly, it could then right. copy the code of that Pokemon, the Pokemon stats, and then allow it yeah. to be projected onto the screen. Yeah, that that's probably all make, we need. That would probably make streaming or battling a lot easier. Because there's certain like. times that I feel like the Pokemon Go app is a little lackluster in means of stability. No. Because it may be adding in extra factors as well, like your location, Pokemon around you, weather, any yeah. rate that might be coming onto the screen. Yeah. So it causes a bit of a slowdown, or it may actually overheat your phone, which I've had experience with that. And I've definitely had that happen. <laughs> but it's all the nonsense that they have to put in there because people continue to spoof and do other underhanded ways to abuse the game. So that causes a burden for the other players that just trying to stay healthy while catching Pokemon. But we need all this other stuff running in the background because people don't know how to play by the rules. Yeah. 